Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Bat rep number five uh, on the YouTuber World Tour. Uh, still in North Carolina, and this is a very special game against uh, Maturum. Uh, he had already reported this uh, on his channel, so you've already, if you've watched his channel, you've already seen this. And so uh, this one is a fun game where they offered me the chance to jump into their narrative. Uh, and so if you watch his channel, you'll understand that uh, right now they started a new narrative game, and it's at a thousand points, and they have a no lords policy and no magic items over 15 points. And I said, let's bring in the Skaven. So here we go. Here's my thousand point Skaven army. Uh, and so I built it exactly as he said. No lords, so no Gracier, obviously, and uh, nothing like that. No warlord. So this army is being led by a chieftain. You can see him in the middle there. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, uh, I think there's two Warplock Engineers in here. Because who doesn't love Warplock Engineers? And uh, they are level one wizards. And then there's, of course, a BSB. Uh, chieftain BSB as well. But let's go through the full list. Starting up on his side. Uh, up there at the top right, we've got the big block of Saurus. And he's got uh, two... Uh, Scarvet heroes in that block, as well as, like, I think a little skinky hero overhanging on the side there. You can see the little orange man. And then the next block over, we've got uh, some skirmishing skinks with a uh, skinky priest. Uh, and that's his level two on, let's say, heavens in there. Uh, next to that, he's got a Bastilidon. And then next to that, he's got a, a little fire spitter. And so that's his army. Uh, on my side, uh, we've got, uh, starting on the top uh, right for me. Got a Rat Pack, got a Warp Lightning Cannon, got a nice sized brick of slaves, because who doesn't love cheap old slaves? And we got some Storm Vermin. Ignore those guys hanging out in the back. They're either supposed to be there or not. They're extras. I don't know. They were just kind of sitting there and I was waiting to put them away as I was taking photos. Uh, got another Rat Pack. Got the ever uh, popular Doom Wheel down at the bottom. And up in the top left, you'll see some sneaky, sneaky gutter runners who have scouted in there. So let me talk about this come from kind of a high level right out of the gate. Um, terrain, you'll notice we left it pretty much the same as the previous battle, which was uh, which was the Bretonians against the Dwarves. Um, that's a... I think we just treated the Temple of Skulls as a normal hill. Um, so that's just a pretty standard hill. That's probably still the Neg1 leadership maw pit over there, and so on and so forth. Uh, I play Lizardmen with my Skaven quite a bit, so I'm very familiar with them. I know what their units can do. And honestly, looking at this, I was not scared of anything he had on his side, except the Saurus block. The Saurus block can do some real damage, uh, but it's but even then, it's still just basically an anvil trying to hit like a hammer. So my goal here was very simple. From the moment I started, my battle plan was disassemble every other piece of his army and then bring everything I've got left to bear on the Saurus block. So I'm just going to ignore the Saurus block put all my chap into them, and try to pick that off. The Gutter Runner scouted there, uh, knowing that even if he got first turn, my hope was actually that he would turn his little Salamander guy and spit at my Gutter Runners. Even if they then panicked immediately off or something bad happened, uh, the reality is that still wasn't that thing marching forward to come spit at my blocks, because I am afraid of that Flame Template getting down on my Storm Vermin. I need the hitting power that they've got if I'm ever going to kill that Saurus block, and having that flame template lay down and scorch off a bunch of Skaven, that's no es bueno. So, uh, that's why they're there. Uh, so they're in a risky position, but the way I figure, even if I can delay that um, that thing for a turn or two before I could get the Doom Wheel around to fry it, then we're in a good place. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on there. That's uh, top of one goes to the Lizard. There's a nice closer shot of him. With uh, you can see a skink priest in there on the on the skirmishing skinks, and here's his movement after one. And you'll notice. So first things first, he did exactly what I said. He turned the uh, the salamander and burnt up uh, one of my gutter runners. You can see the little corpse down there. I hadn't put him back in the box yet, but he got one of them. And they then panic uh, because you have to take a panic test whenever you take a flame weapon. Uh, but fortunately, they roll like a four total, even with the plus one movement from Skaven running away. So they're still on the board and just kind of fleeing. Hopefully they rally, but if not, that's okay. Um, and everything else just marches up. I mean, he doesn't really have much range here. He's got the 
uh, some range on the skirmishing skinks, and he's got a laser blast thing out of the Bastilladon. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty vastly outranging him here, just with uh, the uh, Warlock Engineers having Warp Lightning, the actual cannon, and then the Doom Wheel. So he has to come to me, which, as Skaven, that's always a good position to be in. So he kind of marches up, and other than panicking my gutter runners, nothing much else happens during that turn. Oh, he also wind blasted back my slaves. That's why they're back in that position. That's right. One of his two spells he rolled was wind blast, and he pushed back my slaves. So that's why they're there. He rolled just shy of actually making them take damage. Like they ended up just on the edge of the board or just close to it. It was about a quarter of an edge off. There's my panicking gutter runners running away like little cowards, but that's okay. I still love them. Uh, another shot of that, apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's still them. I have no idea why I have two of those. There we go. All right. So, and then back to me. So my goal here is going to be to kind of move up, like I said, continue. Try to get my chaff in a position where it's going to be able to chaff the Saurus. And other than that, I'm going to kind of like hang back, but draw him into where I can just get in position. I want to, I don't want to be wind blasted up against stuff. But other than that, you know, I'm not too worried about what's going on. And so I move up like this. So you can see here, the Doom Wheel has rocketed forward up on top of the hill. Remember that even though it's all bumpy and stuff, we are treating it like a normal hill. So no difficult terrain there. And that, uh, the Doom Wheel is now in prime position for a zap on both the Bastilladon and the Salamander. So I was really hoping to fry both of them. You'll also notice my little gutter runners up in the top left are pointed back around the right direction. So they rallied. Much appreciated there. And other than that, the slaves march way up, because I'm not afraid of that. That's still a really long charge for his sources. I believe he probably needed a 12 to get at me there. Either way, I'm not taking... I'm, I'm not too worried about it if he happened to get into me, so be it. If he fails a charge, that's a much better chance. That's a, that's a great world to live in as we delayed him another turn. And the uh, rat packs are actually hanging back, because I want to be able to bring them up when necessary. The last thing I want is those little blowpipes or javelins or whatever he's got to be able to get into them and panic them away, because I need that chaff. So they're actually hanging back, because I don't need to chaff anything yet, so let's keep that chaff out of the way. They can shoot 12 inches forward when we need them. And there's the result of the Doom Wheel shooting. You can see the number 8 there. It put out strength 8 shots. Sadly, because of bad rolling to wound, it did take all three bolts to bring down the Bastilladon, but that is one dead Bastilladon, and that's a good thing, uh, because that's... One more step along my uh, my Master Skaven plan here. So, good things there. That's a nice hard-as-a-rock thing that just got eliminated from that flank. Uh, the Warplating Cannon fires at the, Stega, or at the Salamander and promptly does nothing. So, that's great. Much appreciated. Uh, and other than that, that's pretty much the bottom of my turn. So, we go to his turn, and you can see he moves up again fairly aggressively. Um, you know, he wants to get up in range. He wants to make sure that he's got a charge. So he brings up the skinks to kind of be in a position to chaff up my storm vermin because he's afraid of me bringing those in. And he brings the Saurus up into where he's got a pretty decent, solid charge into my into my slaves. Now, again, I'll gladly take that in my slaves in a worst case. I don't really care um, because I'll chew through those skinks fast enough with storm vermin and uh, the two chieftains up front that they don't really pose much of a threat. But... Uh, so he kind of comes up, and he's ready to go. Other than that, not much happens that round. Uh, his magic is pretty ineffectual. And so what happens here? Okay, so we got a nice little point of view shot so I could get everything. Well, first thing, the Doom Wheel ran over there and blew up the, uh, the Salamander. Uh, so that was nice. That was much appreciated. He charged into them and bolted them and impacted hit him. I don't know what he did, but, you know. The salamander died. That's what's relevant. You'll also notice that there is a lot less skinks, and they are fleeing. So what happened here is I declared a charge, like I measured out the distance between my slaves and the sources. And I figured that he would flee with the skinks if I charged him with the slaves, because even slaves will wipe out a pack of skinks. And so I charged him with the slaves, knowing that even on a six, I was still going to end more than an inch away from the Saurus. And he did flee. And then what I did is I put everything from magic into the fleeing skinks. So the warp lightnings went into him, the warp lightning cannon went into him, 
and got a nice direct hit at like strength six. And what we did there is eliminated that unit down to less than 25%. And that's got his caster in it. So now his caster and those two skinks are rallying on twos. Not impossible for uh, cold-blooded skirmishing skinks, uh, but uh, also still not super likely. And my slaves are still in a decent position where they could be chaffing up the Saurus if I want. But what I then do is swing that rightmost uh, rat pack up into position to chaff the Saurus and basically wheel them off. I've still got enough room to where they'll wheel off to the side and not clip the, the, uh, the slaves. I bring the other rat pack as far as it can go around 12 inches to get it ready to do the same thing next round. Meanwhile, the storm vermin are just kind of hanging back, being in a position where they're going to move up next round after the Chaffathon 2015 is done. So you can see here, that's exactly what happened. He charged into my rat pack, killed it. Uh, I think actually he beat it to the point where there was one guy left and he ran away. And obviously he'll never rally. And he then reforms. Uh, I, this is actually a couple turns gone by. Uh, and we're back to my turn, and then his, actually. Uh, I bring up the second rat pack. Now, this time he was close enough I couldn't get him off at an angle, so I just went, you know, kind of chaffed him up straight in. I certainly didn't charge. I just brought the, the pack up and let him do the charge. Meanwhile, the doom wheel's swinging around to get back into position because, well, obviously, what I'm going for here is a big, massive pincer, right? What I want here, ideally, is to be able to hit him, to get him caught the front with slaves when he overruns, uh, which and then get the storm vermin and in the side and the doom wheel in the rear and if all three of those things hit that's going to be a dead block of Saurus. so that's kind of exactly what happens you'll notice up in the top we have only his his little skink priest left as they flee off the board there so basically there oh there you go there you can see my running away pack master the thesaurus miraculously failed to kill all six of my rat pack which was humorous and they overrun into the slaves so, you know, Saurus are pretty scary, but the reality is there's just too many bodies there. And I always give my uh, slave shields. I know most people scoff at me for that. But hey, parries make a difference, and sometimes it can be just enough. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that the tar pit will stick, and obviously he's not going to be able to fight that until my turn. And by that point, the reinforcements will arrive. And that is the result of the reinforcements arriving. So, funny story here. Uh, there was a engineer in the slave unit, and he, I believe, he had some spell. I don't remember what, what Skaven spell he had. It's not really relevant. But when he was, he was up against the front, he was in the top right corner there. And, uh, my response, I charged in with a storm vermin, got far enough on the doom wheel that it impacted the rear, and then I said, and you'll see my little gutters are just kind of running around to watch the fight and cheer on the rest of my Skaven. And I said, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and six dice a spell, because why not? And hope for a giant template. And you'll notice, if you look down in the bottom right, you'll see a bunch of D6s, and three of them are sixes. And you'll also notice the strangely placed close large pie plate of a calamitous detonation. And that's exactly what happened. I cast some spell, I don't know what it was, doesn't really matter. I wasn't actually going for the spell, and this is a truly beardy maneuver, but I, uh, I six diced off, got a miscast three, and dropped the large pie plate down on my slaves and his Saurus. And since I was on the front right corner of the slave block, none of my other units were close. I went ahead and sucked my engineer down the hole, but that strength 10 template just did so much more damage to his Saurus than it did to me. Yeah, I killed some slaves. Okay, life goes on. And then the combination of that with the Doom Wheel in the back, impact hitting, and then zapping, and then, um, or other way around, and then the Storm Vermin going into the flank. At the end of it, there were no Sauruses left. And that is the final shot of the game as the, uh, the Pincher Maneuver worked. Uh, this was a really good game. I mean, honestly, uh, Materum sort of, you know, said afterward that he doesn't play Skaven a lot, and he wasn't sure really what to do with it, and it was, you know, it's a very weird matchup, and, and truly one of the worst things uh, against Skaven is not knowing what Skaven do. Um, the best weapon against Skaven is Skaven knowledge. Um, this is no way an offense to him. He played it very well, and he is an awesome, awesome player. Uh, as you will see in the other game that's going to come up next, 
where despite a large deficit in points, he takes me to the cleaners. So don't worry, his revenge is coming soon. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess, for the next battle. But whatever, that's, no, you know, that's fine. I think he already showed that one too, so it's already out there. Uh, but this was a very fun game. It was great to play during these with, with sort of the very uh, heavy restrictions. It was neat to not have those things like a Gracier to rely on and to not have a Leadership 10 army. Uh, had to settle for Leadership 9. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> so it was a, but it was a very fun game. I mean, I can't complain, you know, certainly my dice weren't perfect, but they did work when I needed them to work. My Skaven toys worked basically how I needed them to work. Uh, so when, when Skaven stuff is doing right, and, you know, you've got, I had that much more chaff than him, I was just able to pick my fights. It was a rough matchup from him from the start, and uh, there you go. That's the game. But again, Mitt is a fantastic player, uh, really good, and I, seriously, if you ever get a chance to play him, absolutely do so. Uh, and it was very fun to guest star in his narrative. Um, if you want to watch his battle, I will go grab that and throw a link to that down below as well, so you can see this from the other side. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to the next game. That's it for this game, and we'll see you next time.